Hey guys, t here. Today I got something kind of special for you. I got a Iowa game. It's on the map. Two Brothers Standard Capture the Base Mode game. This one was actually played by Spartan Elite 43. Really popular YouTuber. Covers World of Warships. Used to cover World of Tanks a lot. Um, he plays on Xbox. I play on PS4. People have been suggesting to me you guys should do some sort of collab together. But because we're not on the same system, we can't really play together. So kind of seemed like uh, dead in the water in terms of that idea. He did come up with this really good idea, though. He approached me the other day and said we should do it like a video swap and kind of comment on each other's games. Hadn't occurred to me. I like the idea, so we're going to give that a go. So hopefully, hopefully you do enjoy it. But yeah, check out his channel. I got the link in the description for you. Lots of great stuff on there, so definitely give that a look if you haven't been over there before. I guess I'll have to point this out. Hopefully it would go without saying, but if I make like suggestions or say like this is what I would do in this situation, it's not a criticism of, of him or his game. The whole point of bringing in an outside perspective is to actually get a different perspective on certain things. So, you know, just because I would make a suggestion here or there or say maybe I would do this instead, it's not a reflection of, you know, his ability as a player. Obviously he's an accomplished player, knows what he's doing. But that's just me adding my two cents to this game. I also point out, people tell me from time to time the how the player base plays the game on Xbox and PS4 is slightly different. Again, I play on PS4, so maybe, you know, that that's the perspective I'm coming from in this game. So just keep that in mind. Now taking a look at the opening positions, we do have two destroyers on each side going to scout. That's good. The problem is on the west, they don't really have anyone supporting them. Uh, that ship that's barely touching the the objective on the southwest side of it potentially could get some shots. But those destroyers are pushing very far forward. Now what's going to happen is they're going to get spotted. They'll take return fire from the enemy destroyers and their support ships behind them, which is going to put them at a severe disadvantage. So scouting is definitely good for destroyers. Um, in general and on this map for sure. The key to it early on though is you don't want to be too aggressive and push too far forward. That's going to compromise your position. Likewise on this side we do have Spartan in a division with another battleship. They're pinning down this corner. They do have a friendly division uh, destroyer scouting for them and another destroyer as well. So pinning down this side here works if two things take place. One, the enemy has to push forward as they're doing to the east and you need ships that are providing vision for you which he does have that so in this case this works now I don't the problem I have with this map is it promotes really campy play which isn't inherently bad but the problem is if nobody's scouting for you or both sides are tucked behind these huge mass islands then basically they're taking themselves out of the game by not allowing them to themselves to be in positions to fire one of the key points of this game is to always put yourself in a position where you're able to deal damage as much as you can while maintaining your safety so because again because he has people scouting for him here this position is actually quite strong but you know you just have to have, have the flexibility in your mind I know there's players out there that they'll go to the same spot every game no matter what and if if it works or if it doesn't work in that particular game by God, they're playing that spot. You know, that's not effective play. So I have the flexibility to react to the situation. You'll do just fine. Now, evaluating the map again, you'll see those destroyers in the west are beginning to fold. We have one eliminated, and the other one is being pressured severely. That's going to be a problem. And then we also do have two friendly ships moving up the canal. I don't find that to be a profitable play early on either. What they're essentially doing is removing their guns from the game for a few minutes. It's going to take two, three, four minutes to sail up there, whatever it is. And what are they going to do when they get there? Get shot at from multiple angles? Okay, well, <laughs> cool. Is that going to help you win? Probably not. And again, keeping an eye on the map, we have lost the western flank. So the ship that was supposedly supporting them is now moving back behind those islands more in the spawn. So. That side is completely open. It's imperative that we keep an eye on that flank for the rest of the game and be able to react because 
those ships that are over there can either do two things. They can go back to support the base, which is what I would usually recommend doing once you've won your side, or they can push forward, which is what players usually do, and try and capture the base. So it looks like those players are noticing because of the ships in the canal launched a plane now. That's a telltale sign that someone's attempting to get up there, so they are turning around, and, you know, that should put the end of that push you know, pretty quickly. But getting back to our side over here, Spartan and his teammates are able to eliminate that KGV. And now we have the Iowa pushing forward. Now these guys on this side are playing effectively. What they're doing is creating crossfires. They have ships directly to the south of these two battleships. And then Spartan over here is at a different angle. He's actually able to access the ship's broadsides by being over here. So creating crossfires is a key component of the game, something you need to always be on the lookout for. Like this I was taking shots with these torps. He has to angle against those torps. He can't turn broadside to them because obviously the torps will kill him. But because he has to angle towards these torps, now Spartan can just get free shots at these broadsides. In this Iowa, which was looked like it was about 80-90% health, roughly a minute ago, is absolutely, you know, evaporated, and he gone. So great work there. This the team on this side is actually playing really well, and of course they're in a division, so that helps out quite a bit. Um, being able to a communicate with your team more effectively. And potentially, if he plays with these particular players with any regularity, that you start to get some familiarity with uh, their tendencies and play styles. Now we see the two ships in the center have turned around. Their uh, attempt to poke through obviously was rebuffed, and you know now they're running away. So what are the you know we got? We're about seven minutes into the game. So for seven minutes, they weren't able to shoot at anyone. They probably took some damage by going over there, and now they're going back to where they spawned. And so for roughly half the game, those players would have actually done better had they just not picked up their controllers. You know, so that's the center canal. You can potentially bring it into play the later into the game you get. But early on, I don't find it to be a very good play in about 98% of the cases and the only time it's going to be effective is if both flanks on the enemy side they're really pushing forward aggressively which you'd probably be better off kind of playing those flanks and pushing back against them so in general I would just avoid sailing up there that early in the game and of course most of those ships that were over there are now identified on the map we still do have that one battleship that's grayed out over there so what these guys need to be doing while they're looking at the map in between the shots is accounting for that player. Looks like we do have a plane sighted over there, potentially, which is kind of a telltale sign that that battleship's moving south. So we do need to keep an eye on the base, and we don't want to outrange ourselves from the base so that they can get on it and capture before we can effectively turn around. Now Spartans kind of push forward. We've got this Iowa that's isolated over here. I was angled pretty effectively against his ships. Would you want to switch to HE? No, not likely. Um, as you can see, some of these shots, you're still able to land 5, 6, 8, 10k, whatever it is, just by shooting super structures, shooting through the deck, whatever. The only time I'm really going to switch to HE salvos on the Iowa is if I know I'm going to be fighting a destroyer. Usually when the destroyer is the last ship on the enemy team, or if I'm in a really long protracted battle with a very skilled battleship commander who's demonstrating to me that he's very good at angling his armor and it's going to be kind of a dug in trench fight and that's and you're not and you know for a fact that you're not going to be shooting at anyone else in that situation you can might consider switching to HE but in that in the current situation in the game those factors weren't present, so sticking with AP was a good choice there. Now this Kagero is pushing back against these ships in the canal and actually eliminating them, so... <laughs> it's kind of the coup de grace for a really ill-advised play. But now that creates a bigger problem because we do have that battleship. It looks like it was briefly sighted in the base. It's now capturing the base. The Kagero's in the channel, they're going to put additional pressure, so we're going to have at least two ships capturing 
Spartan recognizes this, turns around. I would recommend the entire division, or at least that supporting battleship, should probably turn around as well. Usually what happens in my experience is teams get in this mentality, I'm going to cap before the other guy, but you're really relying on your teammates to reset your own cap. Now, if you're in a division with players that you trust, you can get away with that a little bit more. Again, I don't know how often these particular players play together, but maybe there is that level of trust, and they know a Spartan's likely to be able to reset this situation. But still, I'd say you're kind of rolling the dice by... Let me put it this way. It's safer to eliminate the threat to your base than it is to gamble on two things, because for this play to work, they have to get on their base and not get reset by the enemy team, and they have to reset this base effectively. So that's rolling the dice twice. Now there, the Iowa fires HE, puts two fires on him, but which he immediately damaged cons. That's perfectly good. Now, interesting, I noticed here uh, Spartan did not have this Iowa selected, and there was no circle around his <laughs> icon there. And he blasts him with two citadels. No offense, buddy, but that was like the luckiest shot known to man. You'll see in the next salvo when he's still not uh, selected what your normal dispersion is. And he knows this. This was just a mistake. It happens from time to time. You accidentally don't have the ship selected. But if you guys aren't familiar with it, your gunners get massively more effective when, they're at, when the ship is selected. So... You know, usually when you accidentally shoot a ship that isn't selected, you'll get dispersion like that. <laughs> and uh, so once that salvo is launched and he's like, how the hell did that happen? Oh, I didn't have him selected. Now he's selected it again. But getting those two citadels, I mean, he would have hit those two citadels anyway had the ship been selected. But I just thought it was really funny that that was a hell of a dice roll. So... <laughs> Always, always, always shoot at ships that are selected there. But getting back to the situation, so now what we need to be aware of is when you're resetting bases, each ship has like a baggie or a packet or whatever you want to visualize it as of capture points. So we know that Kagero's accruing capture points and this Iowa's accruing capture points. Every time he shoots this Iowa and resets him, the Iowa loses that capture, his baggie of capture points, but the Kagero does not. The Kagero continues to accrue those points. So that's why you kind of want some more support here because he can keep resetting this Iowa all day, but you'll notice every time he shoots him, it's taking less and less of that counter down on the base icon. And at this point, Spartan's actually reacting to that. He's attempting to push into this base to cause it to manually stop accruing, make it contested. But this other Iowa, I assume he's piloted by a Dewey. He's got a ram build, he rams them. Uh, you can actually see the telltale, like, bushy little mustache sticking outside of the commander's hatch there. So I always look out for that infamous Dewey ram build. Uh, this Akatsuki here needed to push forward just a little bit sooner and get some resets. These counters are both extremely close to each other. Um, sitting in the cloud like that is doing nothing, so getting the pressure on them. All you have to do, even if you die, it doesn't matter. Just All you have to do is hit the ship once, but luckily for them, they did uh, win by the skin of their teeth there. So very good game in terms of damage output, well played in terms of the division and uh, map awareness and stuff like that. So good game from Spartan. I appreciate you sending me that. I hope everyone did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions for me, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.